I'm ready to officially announce Brawler Mode for Doom Eternal. What's Brawler Mode? It's a set of rules I came up with for Doom 2016 to encourage high pressure in your face action, banning certain weapon mods and equipment types, forcing the player to play in a different way. Doom 2016, once understood, was very vulnerable to exploits. The siege mode of the Gauss Cannon destroyed everything, remote detonation rockets were ridiculous, the super shotgun too, the hologram could keep the AI perpetually confused. If you wanted to force yourself into a more chaotic version of the game, you had to restrict the tools you could use. Doom Eternal is already built in the spirit of brawler mode, with better weapon balance and combat design and enemy behaviors and the ammo economy. It feels like the game that I was trying to make Doom 2016 feel like. It's already pretty much perfect, but still, you can always make things more intense. There's already plenty of people experimenting with limitations, playing with no upgrades, no mods, no chainsaw. I think there are some people who even try to play without using the dash or the meat hook in combat. Brawler mode isn't designed to be the most difficult challenge possible. If I wanted that, I'd just prohibit the use of everything. Instead, I've tried to find a delicate balance between challenge and fun. I want to maintain the constant adrenaline rush of intense combat, while still maintaining the fun creative expression at the center of Doom Eternal's design. The prohibition list is long, and we're going to talk about the most important ones. Starting with the Sentinel Crystals, the game forces you to use at least one. Brawler mode requires you to upgrade health one time, because a low ammo capacity is vital to the flow of combat, and increased armor allows you to heal too much from setting groups of enemies on fire. You're also going to be glory killing more in brawler mode, and I feel a larger health pool flows better with that. You won't be unlocking any of the upgrade modules, so your flame belch will be recharging slowly. This also ties into runes. Two runes are prohibited, Equipment Fiend to keep your flame recharge slow, and Chrono Strike because it interrupts the flow too much. No extra life pickups, that should be obvious, and if you pick up one by accident, you'll have to blow yourself up to immediately get rid of it. But you can use the saving throw rune if you choose because this can get really brutal. However, you can't abuse saving room to reset your game by force quitting if you choose to play Ultra Nightmare this way. For suit tokens, you can fully upgrade your movement. You can upgrade everything for regular grenade except for the double grenade, and the only environment upgrade prohibited is the one that gives you ammo from barrels. You'll notice there are no upgrades for the ice bomb. That's because the ice bomb is prohibited. Not only is it prohibited, but if you're playing on PC, you need to go into your key bindings and clear out the switch equipment command. That way you can't even accidentally select it, and the temptation won't be there either. Now let's talk about weapons. No Crucible, no BFG, no Unmaker. I thought about possibly including the Unmaker because it's cool, but there's too much risk of accidentally using the BFG because it's on the same button. These super weapons are banned specifically because of the Arch Vial and the Cyber Demon. You have to fight them every time now, and with no Ice Grenade or super weapons, they become stronger pieces of the combat puzzle. PC players, go ahead and disable BFG and Crucible in your key bindings, and say goodbye to that panic button. There's another weapon banned, and you may not like this, the Ballista. Not just a mod, the whole thing. It just breaks the balance of brawler mode. It's too strong to have a full screen instant railgun. It costs way too little ammo to use, and your plasma ammo is also really high. Taking away the Ballista has huge implications on the game. No more rocket Ballista quick swapping to melt heavy enemies, there's also no Ballista Super Shotgun combo for the Marauder, and there's more to talk about with the Ballista's absence once we establish a few more things. Weapon Mods No Sticky Bombs, which has a big impact on the first levels. No Precision Bolt either. These two prohibitions combined with no Ballista make it much harder to eliminate enemies at a distance. You also have to deal with heavy enemies keeping their weapons. If you want to disable that Arachnotron Cannon, you'll have to get close and use a Blood Punch. You'll be using the Blood Punch more often now, which works well because you're going to glory kill more for health. And now, the fast glory kill rune Savagery becomes stronger too. Energy shield on the minigun is banned, it's too good, too easy to guard against the gladiator's laser attacks, too good of a panic button. You all suspected I would ban the lock on rockets, and you were right, they were the first thing to go. No more easy one shots on whiplashes and hell knights from half screen, you have to actually fight them now. Enjoy! For the plasma rifle, both mods are banned. Heat Blast is just way too good of a panic button and taking out weak points easily, and the Microwave Beam is also too good for locking down heavy threats when used in weapon switch combos. The Plasma Rifle is now mainly used for softening up enemies for glory kills and as a fallback weapon when you're low on ammo for other weapons. 
The plasma rifle will feel less useful, and that's by design. You'll start relying more on micro-missiles, rockets, and shotgun. And with the ammo capacity restriction, you're going to be eating through your machine gun bullets quickly from frequently using micro-missiles. Micro-missiles start to replace the ballista as your high damage combo weapon. Rocket Ballista Super Shotgun is now Rocket Micro Missile Super Shotgun. You need to skip the final upgrade of the micro missiles because the mastery is too strong, and the increased damage from that last upgrade is too strong against the con maker. As you'll be relying more on micro missiles and running low on ammo frequently for the heavy cannon, you'll need to use more shotgun, and the full auto mod starts to shine. You're gonna have to get good at it because once mastered with the salvo extender, it's going to be important to finish off enemies with full auto to keep your shell count high. Check out my video on the full auto mod for an overview of that. Here's an example of an effective brawler mode combo against a Mancubus. Shoot him with a rocket first, send a full batch of micro missiles into him, and then a mid-range full auto shotgun puts him down and recovers all the ammo because the Mancubus gives 6 shells back when killed by the full auto. If you toss a grenade into the mix, just one or two full auto rounds will put him down and you'll actually gain 4 to 5 shells from the encounter. You'll want to figure out how to incorporate these full auto kills into your combos to keep your shell count high. You can find little moments with fodder enemies to kill a few of them with full auto to go up one or two shells each. It makes a difference. Use it frequently in incidental encounters to get free kills without using any of your resources. The full auto mod needs to be mastered as soon as possible, and that happens quicker than you think. From the introduction of the first pinky in Doom Hunter Base, there are 15 pinkies from that point to the dining room fight in Ark Complex. And if you die a few times and repeat a few pinky encounters, you can master it even faster. You'll have mastered full auto no later than mid-level 6. For the super shotgun, the fast reload is banned, so it's harder to run around with it and abuse. And that means you can't master it, so no flaming meat hook. Without that flaming meat hook, you can't just run away and refill all your armor. It's going to come from the slowly recharging flame belch, which you will be desperate to use, especially in the Slayer Gates, which are all required for Brawler mode. Secret encounters are not, but of course you're free to do them if you want. The early ones will help you get those much needed weapon upgrade points. You'll notice that certain enemies become much harder to deal with. The Archfile and Cyberdemon will devour your resources. The Gladiator needs to be interrupted with rockets, blood punch, or shotgun. Pain elementals are absolutely horrible because they snipe you out of the air and you're just dead. Barons take forever to put down, and don't get me started on maker drones. These things are ridiculous because you don't really have any way to reliably get headshots on them. You'll be using grenade or remote detonation staggers and then hitting them with a rocket, bullets, or plasma. It's actually easier to just get them into a glory kill state and do it then but they are much more time consuming to defeat if you can't pop their heads off, and so it's going to be harder to replenish your ammo. The con maker fight is much more interesting because of this. There is one more thing to mention, and it's the super shotgun. There is a second version of brawler mode, brawler plus, which prohibits the super shotgun. No yeet hooking past fights, and the up close massive damage is now off the table. It's a more sadistic version of Brawler that leans much heavier on the necessity of the full auto shotgun combo enders, blood punch, and ammo consumption. You'll really want to dominate the full auto shotgun, switching to it to finish off heavy enemies to get more shells, because in later levels, when rooms are packed with heavy enemies, you're gonna run out of micro missiles and rockets. The shotgun needs to do the heavy lifting, and you'd better be getting smart kills on heavies to restock. Since you don't have the meat hook for mobility, I recommend using Blood Fueled, the rune that gives you a speed boost after a glory kill. It helps give you some more mobility, and trust me, you will be glory killing left and right in the later levels, and it helps to be flying around at high speed. Seek and Destroy can also be pretty helpful. But listen, I do not recommend Brawler Plus for your first experience. I played through regular Brawler twice before attempting it, and I still found myself stuck for over an hour in several rooms because it's incredibly difficult. And that's pretty much it. That's Brawler mode for Doom Eternal. Dive in and see how it feels. Here's a list breakdown of all the rules. No extra lives. All Slayer Gates required. No Sticky Bomb. No Precision Bolt. No Primary Charger Upgrade for Micro Missiles. No Plasma Mods. No Fast Reload for Super Shotgun. No Lock on Rockets. No Energy Shield. No BFG. No Unmaker. No Crucible. No Ballista. No Ice Bomb. One Health Upgrade only. No Armor. No Ammo. No double grenade, no ammo from barrels, no equipment fiend, and no chrono strike. It's pretty intense. If you're looking for that day one rush of pressure and fun, this is where it is. Certain enemies will definitely feel higher on the tier list now. The arch vial, whiplashes, and pain elementals especially. 
You don't have to follow these rules explicitly, but if you change them, it won't be brawler mode anymore. If you like these rules, but you want to play with the ballista, or you want to have the ice bomb, or more health, go for it. Have fun the way you want to have fun. I'll leave you with a little clip of some of my gameplay testing, and thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. All right, so I'm going to fight the Marauder with uh, exclusively Super Shotgun and, uh, and Full Auto. And I'll do some grenade in it too. Look at that! Look at that! Alright, here we go. This is the one. Take that whiplash.
Look at that. Look at that full fucking reload. How is that not good? Don't tell me that's not good. Ah! What? What are you doing up there? What are you doing, buddy? I love taking him out with remote detonation rockets. That is so fun. That's nice. Stun. Look at that. Wow, man. That is awesome. Full auto just wrecks the Doom Hunter, dude. Fly, you motherfucker! Yes! <laughs> 